So let's picture the scene. It's a Friday night, you're surrounded by lots of intelligent, beautiful people, there's lots of booze flowing, people having a great time. That's right, it must be time for a maths party. So, you're getting around to some wild, crazy party games, it's that time of night, and suddenly people start the graph sketching game. How quickly can you sketch some graph given the function? So, before we get into uh, transforming exponential graphs and logarithmic graphs and so on, let's just remind ourselves of like the handy sort of guide, the handy rules to help us sketch any graph given its function. Okay. So the first thing you want to think about is, in fact there's no particular order to any of these, it's just the order I've written them down in. First thing you want to think about is, look at the equation of the graph. Are we changing the x or the y coordinates or indeed are we changing both of them? And that's the bit you'll often hear teachers talk about, oh, is the thing in, inside the brackets or outside the brackets, okay, as we often talk about that. Other things to think about then is, are there asymptotes to do with the original graph that you start off with before you transform it? And if there are asymptotes, are they going to end up moving somewhere? Where do they move to? You might want to take that into account. Then you might want to think about what happens as x goes from 0 towards infinity, as x tends towards infinity. And again, just the same kind of thing, what happens as x gets more negative as it goes towards negative infinity. And then, I suppose, the, other thing to, the main other things to think about are where is it going to cross the x-axis and the y-axis? Or to put it a different way, when x is 0, what's the y-coordinate? When y is 0, what's the x-coordinate? So, given this kind of checklist of things to think about, let's do some graph sketching. And we're going to start off in these cases either with the e to the x graph or the lunx graph, and then we're going to transform them according to the equations we've been given to see what we end up with. So, here we go. There's a nice little set of axes to get started. And the first graph I thought we would play about with today is a nice simple one to get us going. What does the graph of e to the 2x look like? So what's the base graph we're going to start with? What's the first graph we're going to draw? Well, it's based in e to the blur graph, isn't it? So let's draw our traditional e to the x graph. And let's remind ourselves it's a power graph. It's something to the power of x. So they all have this kind of shape, don't they? There's y equals e to the x. And what do we know about e to the x? It always goes through the point naught 1. So now we just need to think to ourselves, well, we start off with e to the x. What impact will this... 2x have. Well, let's let's think about this in terms of function machines. Okay, I'll just do a little sketch down here. Here, we start off with our x coordinate, and then what do we do? We e to the blur it, don't we? And we get our y coordinate, which in this case is is e to the x. What do we do when we've got e to the 2x? What's the first thing we do? The first thing we actually do is times our x coordinate by two, so we get a 2x coming out here. And then we do our e to the blur bit, and that gives us our y coordinate, which remember in this case is e to the 2x. So, because we're doubling the x coordinate, the value, say we had to put, I don't know, let's say before we'd put in x was 1, and we'd get you know e to the 1 out, we'd get e out here. What value do I now need to put in to get e out? Well, if I'm, if I'm doubling my x coordinate with this e to the 2x graph, I only need to put x is a half in, don't I, to get started? Because if I put x is a half in, straight away it gets doubled to give me the value of 1, which I'll then plug into my e to the blur bit to give me that. So basically, everything happens twice as quickly. So e to the 2x, it will still go through this point, because when you double 0, it's still 0. It is going to go up, it's going to get twice as steep, twice as quickly, if you like. It's going to get steeper twice as quickly. So effectively, it's going to look like that. Now let's come back to our checklist. Are we changing the x or the y coordinates? In this case we're just changing the y coordinates, aren't we? Are there asymptotes? Yes, there are asymptotes for this original graph, aren't there? Do you remember? e to the x, it never actually touches the x-axis, does it? Because even if you've got e to the minus infinity, it's going to be just above zero. It's going to tend towards zero out that way. So we do have an asymptote. Is it moving in this case? No, it's not in this case, isn't it? We're not shifting stuff around. We're changing the y coordinates. Nothing is actually going to change there. Have we thought about what happens as x tends towards infinity and negative infinity? Yeah, we've just talked about that down there. And where does it cross the x-axis or the y-axis? Well, we've just said it never actually crosses the x-axis, and it still crosses the y-axis at 0, 1. So I'm pretty confident that this red 
curve here, if I was to sort of carry it on, is indeed a good sketch of y equals e to the 2x. Right, let's move on to something, I would say slightly more interesting, but it's not really. But hey, let's go with it. Another set of axes. And let's talk about the graph y equals e to the x minus 1. Okay. Hmm, it's an e to the blob, an e to the blur graph. So let's draw my original e to the x, which as we know crosses at naught 1. And then we've got to think to ourselves, right, what am I changing here? The x or the y coordinates? Well, what am I doing? I'm starting off with my x coordinate, I'm taking one away from it, and then doing my e to the blob thing. So just as with e to the 2x, we were just changing the y coordinates. We're going to be doing the same thing here, but this time we're not doubling the y coordinates or anything like that. We're sort of we're shifting each point around. So whereas before I'd put zero in to get one out, let's have a think. If I put 0 in this time, I take 1 away, I'd now get the same answer as what I would have got for e to the minus 1, okay? which would have been here. Let's put it a different way. If I had x is 1 now, and I take away 1, 1 take 1 is 0, I'm going to get e to the 0. So what this is actually going to do, if I were to think this through, it's actually going to shift all the points one place to the right. So whereas before when I put 0 in, I've got 1 out. Now, if I put the number 1 in, x is 1 in, one take away 1 is 0, e to the 0 is 1. I'm now going to get that result when x equals 1. So everything has been shifted one place to the right. So let's come back to that quick handy checklist. Are we changing the x or the y coordinates? Well, in this case, we are changing, how would I describe that? Are we changing the x or the y coordinates? Do you know, I'm now hesitating. I'm having one of those moments where I'm not really confident <laughs> that I'm explaining it brilliantly. We're going to go with that for now, though, okay? Are there any asymptotes? Yes. Are we changing them? No. We're just shifting everything one place to the right. What happens as x tends towards infinity and minus infinity? Yes, we've talked about that. And where does it cross the x-axis or the y-axis? Right, that's the final thing we need to think about here. What's the coordinate? here going to be? Well we know the coordinate, the x coordinate is still 0, what would the y coordinate be? Let's just have a little play, y is equal to e to the power of 0 minus 1, e to the power of negative 1, so to be honest I could just give that as e to the negative 1, there's that point. And that ladies and gents is the graph of e to the power of x minus 1.